From the North Country's news station, 7 News Tonight starts now. Tonight on 7 News, computer systems around the world back and running again after tens of thousands were hacked. But who's behind the attack is still unclear. And asked if there were any issues and they assured me that no, everything had been done legally. Plus accusations against State Senator Patty Ritchie saying she took committee pay she's not entitled to. But first, North Country graduates cross the stage in Canton and Potsdam. What kind of job climate will they be walking into? Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Graduation season starts today with ceremonies at SUNY Canton and Clarkson University. And at Clarkson, more than 700 graduates received their diplomas at Chiel Arena this afternoon, celebrating the students' accomplishments, talents, and the road that lies ahead. And the same scene was happening at SUNY Canton earlier this morning with the studies over. Now students are joining in on the job hunt. 7 News reporter Garrett Dombluski was at the graduation. He tells us the job outlook for students is one of the best in years. I didn't think it was a big deal until I put on my gown. I was like, oh my God, I'm graduating. It's graduation day at SUNY Canton and more than 900 students in its class of 2017 can look to the future with hope. According to a study by the Economic Policy Institute, the average wages of a college student graduating this year are now higher than they were for students who graduated in 2007, just before the recession. Plus, the unemployment rate for college grads continues to shrink. We spoke with a number of students who say it's their internships that led them to a job out of school. It definitely helped. I was looking at other companies in the meantime, but there's was definitely a comfort knowing, hey, I've got a place when I graduate for sure. Angelina Carmichael is moving back home to the Bronx to work for a hospital where she interned. My whole family is um, full of nurses and doctors, and I wanted to be in the field. Marianne Perfume graduated from the Vet Tech program. Her internship helped steer her towards a particular specialty. It helped me to know what I wanted to do in my field, which is um, intensive care. I love it. The ICU ward was really like where I flourished when I was interning. Whether students have a job lined up or need some more time to look, their prospects are slowly improving. I'm not scared. I know I, I know I got this. Definitely some excitement in the air as students look towards their futures. Garrett Dombluski, 7 News. And graduations in the North Country continue next weekend with Jefferson Community College Friday night, SUNY Potsdam next Saturday, and St. Lawrence University next Sunday. Well, time now for our first look at the forecast with Les Shockley. Les, how you doing tonight? I am very good, thank you for asking. Sir, weather's not too shabby either. We can see some rain showers throughout the area of northern New York here. Spotty showers throughout the evening. Really just going to be more of a drizzle as we step through our evening tonight. And into tomorrow, probably some more rain. I know tomorrow's Mother's Day, so probably folks have some things planned. Maybe going out with mom for lunch or brunch. Make sure you bring an umbrella with you. Probably going to see some rain throughout the day as we look into the morning. Got some scattered showers. We'll be in the upper 40s. See the rain throughout the day. and We'll have more on that Mother's Day forecast coming up in just a little bit. Back to you, Patrick. Thank you. Last accusations tonight that North Country State Senator Patty Ritchie and other lawmakers got thousands of dollars in stipends they weren't entitled to. Now, Ritchie was one of the seven named in a New York Daily News article last night, first reporting she took pay for being a chairperson of a state legislature committee she's not the chairperson of. Now, we talked to Ritchie earlier today. She says she's received $15,000 for being the vice chair of the health committee. Spectrum News is reporting the stipend Ritchie received was a chairperson's pay. Now, Ritchie says she doesn't touch the stipend paperwork. And when the article came out, she contacted people in charge to see what was going on. They told her everything was done legally. Probably a week after I accepted the position uh, that it was approved that I would have the stipend for the health committee. But outside of that, I did not fill any paperwork out. I do not make any decisions when it comes to stipends. That comes from the leadership. While it appears there's nothing illegal about the stipends being paid out, watchdog groups like Reclaim New York are saying, quote, let's call this what it is, fraud, end quote. Well, meanwhile, in the state legislature, there's a proposal in front of state lawmakers that would allow Uber and Lyft to start service in upstate a little earlier, which would allow the services to be up and running by 4th of July weekend. Well, new tonight, a Lewis County man is facing burglary and arson charges. Deputies say on April 2nd, 35-year-old Joseph Kittleman entered his landlord's camper in town of Lionsdale, taking things and setting them on fire. Now, Kittleman was arrested on May 9th with bail set 
at $2,500. Well, many computer systems around the world are running again after they were frozen in a massive cyber attack. Tens of thousands of computers in about 100 countries were affected. And experts say the so-called ransomware is no longer spreading. CBS's Jonathan Vigliotti has the latest from London. The virtual attack sent the UK's National Health Service into emergency mode. Ambulances and patients were turned away from hospitals across the country after malicious software crippled their computer systems, making access to patient records impossible. They said, I'm really sorry, but the computer system is down. Um, you're going to have to go away. We can't have any appointments. It would be dangerous to do so because you can't access any of the files. Hackers encrypted those files, rendering them unreadable. To decode them, they demanded $300 in ransom. The amount would double after three days. If ignored, they warned, data would be destroyed. The malware program appeared to exploit a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows, first identified by the U.S. National Security Agency and later leaked in a series of stolen documents. The hack wasn't just limited to computer systems in the UK. Businesses across Europe, including Spain's telephone system, were targeted. Japan, Turkey and the Philippines were also infected. And in the US, FedEx was hit. But it appears the brunt of the attacks were felt in Russia, including the country's largest mobile phone company. Here in the UK, government officials say computer systems are almost fully back up and running. It's still unclear who's behind the attack, but analysts say the hack appears to be the work of cyber criminals and not state-sponsored. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, London. It's like the Baseball Hall of Fame of maple syrup. The American Maple Museum in Krogan celebrated its 40th anniversary today, as well as inducting new members into its Hall of Fame. Tom McCrum of Ashfield, Massachusetts, and John Henderson of Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, represented the class of 2017 for their contributions to the maple syrup industry. And the museum also celebrated its victory of the Muse Award it received from the American Alliance of Museums for its audio tour. The museum accepted its award at a ceremony in St. Louis, Missouri last weekend. Well, still ahead on 7 News, getting spammy posts out of your Facebook feed. Plus, a little bit of wine, beer, and food, well, it's good for the soul. We just never got the full amount of games in uh, to get a rhythm going. And what do you do when almost half of your baseball season is rained out? We'll have the answer. 7 News Weekend will be back in a moment. From the North Country's news station, you're watching 7 News Tonight.